I know you're tired of cleaning and still living in clutter and chaos. No matter how much you vacuum, mop, sweep, and sanitize, your space still feels untidy, cluttered, and overly occupied. Let me help you to figure this out with these five simple realizations. Number one, quite literally, be for real. You do not need most of what you own. In fact, our lives would not be significantly impacted if we got rid of 50% of what we own. You would still be able to go on living a regular life. So that should tell you that we have more convenience and even more desirable items than what we actually need. Understanding this basic principle is essential to getting started. Typically, we hold on to things because we think that maybe I'll need that later, or it may become more useful than it has not been for the past duration of time you've already owned it. If you can wrap your head around potentially parting ways with a lot of your possessions, you'll be ready to jump in. Number two, analyze what's important for you. The problem with a capitalistic society is that we get into groupthink behind trendy items. Did you purchase an air fryer when they were popular and now you only use it once a month? If that, were you a victim of home goods and shiny object syndrome? Yeah, me too, so no judgment. Regularly seeing things marketed as convenient or impactful can easily send you into the downward spiral of consumption. But those shiny objects, they're one size fits all convenient solutions for the nation. They're not necessarily what you need. So instead of having the shiny objects to purchase, focus on objects that will actually benefit you. What do you actually need to conveniently sustain your living? An air fryer is cool, right? But would you benefit more from using your money on a convenient storage solution for your already cluttered kitchen? The cute home decor in the store is enticing, but would you benefit from it in any way? Or would your money be better spent on maybe an ottoman that also stores blankets so your living area can look tidier, cleaner, and more put together. Asking ourselves questions before swiping can sometimes take us off the ledge. If we don't need it to suit our lifestyle, or if we don't use it to improve our quality of life, should we even buy it? Number three, everything you spend money on is either essential or non-essential. Don't overcomplicate it. Am I saying to never purchase a non-essential? No, but I am saying to recognize the difference and act accordingly. Anything non-essential has the potential to be cluttered. So you should weigh its usefulness and purpose before buying it. An example would be you buy a shoe rack for your closet. You do not need it but it may increase the visual appeal in your closet and maybe it'll help you to save a little bit of space. But it's not essential because your shoes were getting along just fine the way that they were before you purchased it. A shoe rack, if purchased, would be a non-essential convenience at best. Food, on the other hand, even if it does take up space on the counters in the refrigerator and in the pantry, that's essential and likely it'll be eaten at some point. So you won't really be taking up much occupied space forever. If you would not replace an item if it were damaged or lost, it's probably not essential. Number four, some things are just things. Some things are more. Some items can be done away with and we wouldn't miss them. Some, however, may end up being missed, particularly items with sentiment. Items with sentiment can definitely be decluttered in a meaningful way. Consider the item and its original purpose. How can you preserve the memory or the purpose without physically keeping it? You can take a picture 
take parts of it to create something more compact, frame it, gift it to someone close to you who will actually use it. I've seen a creator take an old box of baby clothes to create a small memory teddy bear. And this idea is great for moms who of course have trouble parting with their baby clothes, at least the sentimental ones. Dolls and special items can have pictures taken. You can frame them. And then the physical item can actually be given away. Most of the time we think that our attachment is to the physical item, but it's actually that we're attached to the memory or what that item represents. Maybe we're attached to the person who gifted us the item and they're no longer here, or we're attached to some other memory that that physical item maintains. Number five, most things are replaceable. This is a worst case scenario one, but it brings comfort to know and understand that if you do find yourself getting rid of something and you end up needing it, which is very rare, you can usually replace it with an exact replica or something similar. We tend to convince ourselves otherwise making unreasonable excuses as to why we hold on to things. But trust me, if you get rid of something, it will be okay. Hopefully being aware of these five realizations encourages you to get started with decluttering. Good luck.